God, and I allow your word to come through. God, anoint the ears that the ears may hear. God, let this word change and break and set free, God. God, I ask you to deliver the word, God, and, and deliver souls today, God. Move for each and every one of us, God, and, and anoint this, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And, and that's what we're ministering on, the chains of prisoners. And I, and I want you to understand something. A chain always has a link. A chain always has a link. And, and, and it's linked to something else. It's, all, it's always tied to something. It's always, a, a, a chain is not alone. It's always got links. And look at the book of Psalms, 107, the book of Psalms. Psalms 107, we'll start reading that. And it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. I mean, he's good. Amen. Look at the same and say, he's good. Amen. I may not act like it sometimes, but he's always good. I may not portray it sometimes, but he's always good. And let me just stop there just a moment and tell you about how good God is. He's good. And we're supposed to be like him. And, and, and I got a phone call or a, a message this morning. The other day I was at Walmart. And I'm a joker and everybody knows that. But this lady, I had my buggy full. And this lady was fixing to check me out. I said, will you come over and unload my car? Dude, just joking. And, you know, kind of got this little, ha ha, you know. And I said, oh, it's all right, but God is good. She messaged me this morning and said, because of my kindness and because I was good and because I had the favor and, and, and I showed her godly love, she said it changed my life. And she sent me a picture of her car. She said, I couldn't wait to get to church this morning. And when I got out of the shower, because of your goodness and what you showed me was godly love, I had a flat tire and a tire and I can't come. But God opened my mind up. If God is good, guess what? We got we got to be good. How many got God inside of you? Amen. Are you good? Amen. Are there any time that you bad? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you see, where did that bad come from? And I, I'm not going to put in there too long. Let me let me let you. Let me make it clear. If you have some bad things that's going on and you let people see badness in you when you're supposed to be serving a good God and His mercy endureth forever, what causes me to act bad sometimes? It's because I've got a link. I'm linked to something. I wish y'all would help me a little bit. I'm linked to something. Something caused that bad to happen in me. Something caused me to act bad. And when I understand the word says give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endured for how long? Forever. Forever. And the Bible tells us God will show mercy to me because I show mercy to what? I got to show mercy to others because if, if I treat others with mercy, I mean, those God's going to treat me with mercy. And if I treat others with badness, there's something wrong. I'm not connected to the right thing. I still got some bad linked in my chain. I got something that's still connecting me to the man I use. Can somebody just help me preach? I, I wish somebody help me preach. Listen, when I come to Christ, the Bible says the old man <clears throat> passed away. Behold, all things become new. But what I got to realize, the, the past is always trying to creep its way back in. It's because I never gave it all to God. I don't need to be linked to nothing but God and His mercy. And His mercy endure forever. Oh, yeah. oh somebody help me preach this morning. I hope I get done in 30 minutes. But boy, I feel the presence of God. My God. My God. I'm linked to something that ain't God. There's something that's coming out of me that I didn't get rid of. There's something in there that's not supposed to be. How do I know? Because I'm linked to it. I'm tied to it. It's just my DNA. No, it ain't God created a new person in you. It's your choice to pick it back up. I got to give thanks to God. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And the second verse, when we walk around, when we walk around town and all around, this is what we're supposed to do. And I love that song Sister Ashley that was playing, that he is the redeemer of my past. And he didn't stop there in that song. You know what else it said? 
my future. Who is the redeemer of my past and my future? Jesus. Jesus is. And you know what I'm supposed to proclaim for all the world to see? It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many's been redeemed this morning? Do you know what redeemed means? It means you've been bought with a price. You've been brought back out of the depths of sin. You've been paid for. Jesus Christ shed his blood. And you accepted him. You've been bought back. You've been redeemed. There has been a payment made for your sin. Amen. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so. Say so. Where, where do you say it? In your prayer closet alone? Do you just say it when you, when you get along good with your wife and everything's all good and you got $500 in the bank account and oh man, everything's good. I got some chocolate candy for Valentine. Oh, I feel so good. But in the bad times, if I'm linked to the right thing, Their soul fainted in them. 
They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Seventh verse. He, and he led them forth by the right way, that they might go down to the city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied, satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. With what? Goodness. goodness. Not badness. Not bad things. And the 10th verse said, such, such as sit in darkness and the shadow of death, bound, bound. The word bound means a prisoner, a prisoner, a prisoner. How many is a prisoner of something? How many is a prisoner of something? You see, when... When that preacher told that preacher, he better stay away from me because I have a past. Listen, my past does not keep me in confinement no more because I've been redeemed. God. And I'm going to tell you, when you bring my past up, I'm going to tell you about my future. If you want to dig around in my past, go ahead. It doesn't bother me because I refuse for some guy to link me to my past. You know why? Because there's no more link there. Because who the Son has set free is free. I refuse to be a prisoner of what my past is. I refuse to be a prisoner flat. How many going to refuse to be a prisoner today? Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound and being a prisoner in affliction. And how many knows what that means? I'm going to just teach you a little bit in preaching. Is that right? Bound in affliction. Affliction is something that causes pain or suffering. Something that causes pain or suffering. Have you been church hurt? Yeah. Have you been family hurt? Have you been job hurt? I'm trying to think of things. You know what you've been hurt with. And we walk around that pain constantly. And we just can't shake it loose. We just can't walk in freedom. Because somebody hurt my feelings. And it's serious. You don't understand. It may be serious. And I understand what pain is like. But I also understand. When I was at the point of committing suicide. I had so much pain. That the Holy Ghost came. And shook me on the shoulder. And said son. Get out of it. I'm waking you up. Afflicted, but I also understand what it's like to be set free. Amen. Pain. Yes. Pain. Yes. pain, something that causes you pain. I, I can't look at somebody because they cause me pain. I can't do this because it reminds me of something. I, I, am I preaching to somebody? I, I, I can't look at that car because it's red and somebody that hurt me, they had a red car. I, I refuse to live in the prisoner of my past because Jesus Christ has redeemed me. And the word says, let the redeemed say so. I've been bought back with a price. He shed his blood. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. And by his strap, I am healed. I'm not just healed on the physical part. I'm healed in my heart. I'm healed from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Amen. Amen. I'm healed. I'm healed. I mean, he's bound in afflictions. I'm talking to somebody today. And he's got some afflictions that you're bound with. Come on now. Please, Lord. Oh, All but you don't understand my hurt. Oh, but you don't understand my God. Amen. You don't understand how much they stole from it. You don't understand this and that and other. But you don't understand how big God is. He's the God. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's still God. And he's still in control. Oh, no. Amen. Bound and prisoner and bound bonds. Bound in afflictions, in pain, and in iron. Iron is shackles. Shackles is chains. It's chains. And it's chains of a prisoner. And, and how many ever watched them old prisoner movies? Wow. How many ever seen an old prisoner movie? What I want you to understand is something. You may think that you're the only one that's going through it in your family and you're rebelling against God. 
But what you don't understand, if you watch those old prison movies, they call them the chain gang. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a chain gang? It, it means that you're not alone. If you're digging a sewage ditch out, every who you chain to is either smelling it or digging it with you. Come on. Amen. Amen. Either they're getting some stuff on them or they're, or they're real close and it's making them sick. But what I'm trying to say, you may think that it's okay to rebel against God and you think that it's not affecting nobody. But what I want you to understand, you're linking yourself to your family. You're making your family be an example of who you are. If you don't want to serve God by half the time, your children ain't going to want to serve God by half of the time. It's a link that God has to break. I don't want nobody to be linked to me that I'm causing trouble. I don't want to be slothful in God and allow my kids to be slothful. I don't want to be unfaithful to God because I'm linked to my kids. Amen. Oh. Well, you, know. you think you go out and spend, you win, you, win, you, you get a thousand dollar paycheck and you got five kids at home and a wife and you go down to the gambling hall and you lose every bit of it and you think it's just hurting me. No, it hurts everybody that you're involved with because you are linked to your family. Oh, yeah. Link. I've been linked to something. And, and, and how many here's been linked to something? Amen. Some of us feel unworthy. How many ever felt unworthy for God to you? Can I just preach about it? Let me see what time I'm leaving, Lord. Oh, I got about 10 more minutes. <coughs> how many ever been feeling unworthy? Oh, come on, heaven. You see, God's called me to do something, but I just don't feel worthy. What you don't understand is it's causing your family to feel the same way. If I have a flat tire and I get out and I kick the bushes and kick the tree and get mad at the world, it's not only affected me, everyone that I, that's in my family, they take on that nature and they see daddy doing it. They think it's okay to do it because when you do something and when you allow yourself to be bound down by something, it's not only hurting you because you have links in your life with your family and people around you, your co-workers, your co-workers have those that's supposed to Christ in you. Glory, oh, glory. So when you link yourself with things, you chain yourself to others. You chain, you, a chain gang is, is a group of prisoners. It's command, uh, bound together, chained together to perform mental or physical challenging work as a form of punishment. How many ever caused your family a form of punishment because of the way you've acted. <laughs> I don't want to chain my family to me feeling unworthy. Some of us feel that our mistakes, how many ever allowed your mistakes to chain you down? Come on now. You see how mistakes work? It gets in your mind. And when, you, when it gets in your mind, it gets in your home. It gets with uh, the people that you come in contact with. If you feel unworthy and you claim that God's the greatest God and you tell them and you witness to them that God will set you free. But when they watch you and they see you wallowing in your mistakes and they thought, my God, I thought their God was merciful. I thought God was their God was a redeemer. But yet I see you walling in your mistake and not allowing the blood of Jesus to set you free. I'm linking you to that kind of thought process. And this is what I'm trying to say. If I can go to hell and them hypocrites can. Oh, how many of you ever heard that? Yeah. If those folks down at that church can go to heaven, I know I got a one-way ticket. How many of you ever heard that? It's because you're linking people to the wrong thoughts. You are portraying Christ in you the wrong kind of way. And what you're doing is linking them people to a Unsuccessful life. How many's got some mistakes you've been bound to? Am I the only one? Oh. Some of us has got inadequate problems, inadequate, lacking the quality or quantity, insignificance of, of, for a purpose. You know, when God called me to preach, the number number one thing that I used against God was I'm inadequate. Come on now. And I ran and I ran, Brother Greg, I ran and I ran and I didn't feel worthy. I ran from God, I ran from God. And here we had a pretty good bit of money when God called me. We had a safety deposit box, I've told you so many times. 
full of hundred dollar bill, one of those big ones. And I mean, I couldn't even close the lid hardly. I would force it down and almost break the hinges. And I was putting money other places. I mean, we was rolling in the clover, they say. And when I started running from God, God took every dime I had. And the only thing I had was dust left. And you know what? It didn't just hurt me when I ran from God. I linked myself to my family. I caused my family some suffering because I felt inadequate. And it cost me my family. It cost me, cost me my family, but it cost me pain in my family. Some of us are linked to criticism. How many of you ever had criticism to link oh, to? Yeah. How many of you ever been criticized? Amen. Amen. How many of you feel you make you feel bad? Amen. How many of you allowed that criticism to put you in the bonds of prison? Come on. Some of us has been linked to religious things. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not saved by religion. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. I'm saved by salvation. Oh, yeah. Come on now. And I was reading this morning, and I, I don't want to get into this too much, but I was reading this morning and studying in, 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 in the Old Testament about how that when, when they had to wear fringes on their, their clothing. How many remembers that story? Amen. Anybody ever heard that? And you know what color they had to be? Anybody know that? The ribbons that was tied in, anybody know what color they're supposed to be? That's an Old Testament. It's real close to the way, you know, they get some stuff out of Deuteronomy too, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the whole dress code of the church is Deuteronomy, right? Mm -hmm. the, amen? But over there in the, in the same Old Testament, it talks about if you're going to wear a garment, you got to have some fringes on the bottom of it, and it needs to be blue fringes to remind you of God's commandments and God's laws. How many of you that? But I've never once heard that priest in the church, but I've heard the dress code preach so bad that this lady that called me this morning, she said, sir, I want to come to church, but I don't own a dress, and I, I cannot come in a pair of pants. I said, ma'am, you come on, you come as you are, because we're not linked to that kind of stuff. God don't look at the outer appearance. God looks on the inside. He looks at that heart, and if you can look as holy as you want to, and if you ain't got God on the inside, I know you're still just as bad as you once was, and if you to set you free. I mean, no, I'm not combined, combined. I'm not combined or confounded in prison anymore. I've been set free. Amen. What are you trying to say? I'm telling you, religion, things, and men's doctrine has got so deep in us that it's not allowed us to be free in God. Man. So when, when we're linked to all those things and when God's trying to show us a different and, and show us, listen, it's okay. God don't look at whether a woman's got pants or that on. God looks at the heart. It's hard to let go of that because we've been bound by those kind of traditions and those doctrines that's been hammered in our soul. And it's hard to let go. And we can't walk around in freedom. And you know what? We don't have no joy. It's because some of us has been caught up in religious change. Man, I got some Baptist buddies. We sit around and talk about the Bible. Man, they learn things from me. I mean, they really do. And guess what? You learn from them. Ooh, man, I learned a lot from them. You know why I'm, I'm able to learn from my Baptist buddies and Methodist buddies and they're able to learn from me? It's because we're not allowing those religious barriers to Amen. chain us down to one kind of that's right. We've been set free. That's right. Yeah. The only the only thing that I can be loose by, <clears throat> you know what sets me free? The word. What? The word. The word. What sets you free? The word. The word. The word. But yet here we are supposed to be the happiest people in the world and we're bound down and we're linked together with things that won't allow us to be happy. Oh, have you give me about five more minutes? Have you got something in your life right now that's got you linked to unhappiness? Don't raise your hand. I want you to think about it. Is it sickness? We got, we got, he, he said, I got you covered. Is it depression? He said, I got you covered. Is it finances? I got you covered. You mean he said he'd supply all half of them? Let me, let me reword, let me reword about it. He said he'd supply half of my needs, right? He said he'd supply three quarter of my needs, right? Where am I missing that? He, you mean he said he'd supply all your needs? Does that mean everything that's got me linked to my past, you know what he's going to do? 
He'll break it. How many's got some things that's got you bound down? I know I got to hurt. How many's got some things? Let's turn over in the book of Hebrews. It says the 12th chapter. It says, wherefore see, we also are compassed. That means we're surrounded by, with a great cloud of witnesses. A witness is somebody that see you. Say, I see you. Look at your neighbor and say, I see you. I see you. I, I see you. I see you. Come on now. <laughs> There's some people that see you. How many claims to be a Christian in here? Well, we need to have a religious service, don't you? How many claims have been a child of God in here this morning? Guess what you got looking on you? You got some eyes on And he said, we're, we're compassed with, about with a great kind of witness. Let us lay. Let us lay aside every weight. A weight is a heavens, a force of pressure, something that has us changed. Come on now. Something that has us changed. He said, what well, do it? Lay aside. And, and, and I want you to understand something. And, and it goes on to say sin. I mean, how many knows we all know what sin's about? Amen. Amen. We didn't preach hard on sin, right? And sin's still a sin, it will not make it in. Amen. 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 But what we need to focus on, we understand it's wrong to rob a bank. We, wrong, we know it's wrong to cheat on your wife or husband. We know it's wrong to steal, lie, cheat, and destroy. We, we know that's wrong. But did you know that weight that you're carrying around that's got you bound to something that you're not supposed to be bound with? Did you know it's wrong also? Because he said, lay it aside. Every weight and sin that does so easily beset you. Beset means ensnare you or trouble you or threaten you. Trapped you up. You got to lay those traps down. You know, if you set a rat trap in your drawer, don't forget about it because it ain't going to work. Don't stick your finger in it because you know it's going to get you. If you know that that pain is causing you to drift your to drift you and your family away from God, it's got there's something that's got you linked up that's not here to stick to. You know what the thief comes to? It's not to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, "I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly." If something is still in your joy, if something's still in your victory, it's a weight and it's got you bound down. And I'm here to tell you today that He is a chain breaker. Every side, let aside every weight and sin which those easily entrap you or, or, or weigh you down. And let us run with patience. Patient means the captivity, the capacity to accept trouble or delay or something without getting angry or upset because it will happen. I mean, those the promises of God are, are no and no, right? Anybody listen to me? Well, that's the wrongest statement I ever made, right? The promises of God are what? Yay and, Yay and amen. Yay and amen. You know what that means? Yes, yes. and yes. It's, the, it's going to come to pass. Why? Because I got promise on it. It says the last side of the way that so this easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured Endure. The cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider. Consider means think carefully about. Consider this. Think carefully about it. Him that endured such contradiction. And that means so much hostility. How many of those Jesus faced some hostility? I got to consider that, that the, we got to consider our king face some hostilities of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. Faint is discouraging. How many is going through something that's just discouraging? Come on now, brother. Brother Michael, it's because something's linked to that unhappiness. I'm not going to, I'm just. You understand? 
there's something that's causing that, that something is causing that discouragement. Is it God? Is God causing your discouragement? Or is it something you're linked to? Is it something that's weighing you down? What do I do with it? I gotta fight this stuff. I gotta get it out of my life. How do I do it? Second Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? It's whatever got you linked to your situation. I, I know I might be boring you, but I'm preaching you something this morning. I'm pretty, there's something that's got you tied down and got you in prison. It's got you linked. And it's not only costing you, it's costing you family and your loved ones around you. You know what? If, I get, if I'm an alcoholic, it ain't going to hurt nobody. It'll cost you your home. It'll cost you your kids. It'll cost you your family. It'll cost you your reputation. It'll cost you your job. It'll cost you your health. Do you want me to keep on going on? It does not just affect you. It affects everyone around you that you're linked to because you change you up with the structure and I can't fight this no more. God, I'm not happy and I don't know what to do with it. I've tried everything I, I can do. Listen, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal through, the, but mighty through who? God, to the pulling down of stronghold. A stronghold is something that's got you held back. I can't break through to happiness. I can't break through joy. I can't break through for God to use me. It's because I'm facing an imprisonment of something that's got me linked like a prisoner. And the fifth verse says, casting down imaginations and every high thing. Come on back to the piano and the music. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And I like this part. Bringing into captivity. Every what? Oh. Thought. Man, listen to me. I want everybody to listen to me. I want everybody to listen to me. Bringing into captivity every what? Oh. Thought. What is hindering you today? It's your mind. It's your mind that puts it. Brother Greg don't like me. He stuck his tongue out of me. It, it, it doesn't matter if I stick my tongue out of it. You're not here for me. You're here for God. God will bring that thought, thought pattern into captivity. To what? To the what? Obedience of Christ. To what? Obedience of Christ. Ooh. To the obedience of who? Christ. To the obedience of who? Christ. Who's going to break those chains? Christ. Who? Christ. Because you can't do it on your own. Those are man. You know what imagination has cost? It's cost a lot of husbands and wives. The devil will place in your mind, Brother Bill's cheating on me, or Sister Susie cheating on me, and he'll make something look so real. It's nothing but a lie from hell just to come to destroy your family. You need to wait around and pray and seek God and find out the true evidence. And you know what? The devil will come to kill, steal, and destroy and make your imagination run wild and keep you out of church for 15 years and you'll never be happy and your family won't be happy because you are linked to your family. How do I bring this into captivity? I can't do it because the way Welcome to my warfare or what not what? Carnal, oh, not flesh, but mighty through God. Through the what? The pulling down of throne of strongholds. Bring it into what? Those things that I'm linked to that's running wild against me through the throne. When the enemy comes in like a flood, guess what the Lord said he'll do? He'll count. He'll build up a hedge of power. What do I do about it? Stand ye feet. I don't want nobody to leave yet. I got something special to do. <clears throat> How do I get rid of these thoughts? How do I get my family back? How do I get my family to be happy again? How do I get happiness in myself again? Here's what Jesus told me in Matthew 11th chapter. You know what Jesus said to him? Sister Gina, it's that easy. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden. You know what he'll do to you with that, that weary mind, that, that 
chain the, that bound down mind, those things that's got you linked to your past and all your troubles, and you don't see no way out, you don't see no path, no way past your possession, or your or when you're drug possessed, or you, you're a drug addict, or you're an alcoholic, you're a, you're a pornographer, uh, pornography uh, uh, addict, or whatever, and all the things that's got you tattered down and making you feel that you're not worthy, all the things, all that pain, all those bitter thoughts, and all those hurtful feelings that's keeping in your family from striving in God. What do I do with it? He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. What did he say I'll do? I'll give you what? I'll give you rest. Rest for what? My weary soul. 29 verse says, take my yoke of home and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart. And you shall find what? 30 verse says, For my yoke is easy. And you know what? My burden is. You got no business being under the sound of my voice being bound down by anything. Today's your day.